What's up, everybody? In this video, Matthew Movies and I, we're going to talk about some of our favorite ambiguous endings in movies. And if you don't know what exactly ambiguous means, what I mean by that is it's not your typical Hollywood ending. A lot of Hollywood movies, they end, they, they basically wrap everything up. It doesn't really leave you with any questions. So an ambiguous ending does leave you with some questions afterwards. And it's not like a, um, definitely not always a happy ending. I know a lot of Hollywood movies have these very, and when we use the term Hollywood ending, usually it is a happy ending. So um, you'll see a lot of movies that end with like a new romance kicking off or there could be a major life event like a wedding or a funeral or, you know, baby born, something like that. Or, you know, the hero saves the day, of course, is a big one. So, yeah, that those are the very typical endings. And I'm not completely putting those down, but I'm a big fan of ambiguous endings just because, like I said, you know, they leave you with something to think about, which I really appreciate. I, I like being challenged as a movie viewer. You know, sometimes in Hollywood, they will have these... Um, these uh, um, test viewings that you know they call them test audiences and a lot of times if you hear about that um, that a movie is going through the test audience process usually it doesn't have a great memorable ending I think the best endings in movies are those that did not go through that process you know because um there there have been some movies just that just straight up ruined by test audiences from the feedback from them and I really it's not really so much the test audience but the studio completely buying into what the test audience says it's almost like mob mentality except it's not like a you know that violent reaction but it's more of a reaction where people go with what's typical with what's safe and that's what they want to see that's what they say and i really hate that a lot of people say that's what they want to see and then they complain about a movie basically being you know too simple or not memorable but that's the reason why we have to um really embrace the you know that some directors and writers they really want to be creative and they want to kind of leave things open sometimes and I, I think that's just more interesting it really gives you something to dissect later on so um so yeah Matthew movies and I we're gonna go back and forth here talking about some of our favorite ambiguous endings it will be mild spoilers but you know we'll try to keep those to a minimum really hope you enjoy you know um the, the movies here that we've discussed and also definitely want to hear about your favorite ambiguous endings as well when it comes to a movie with an ambiguous ending that I think is really, really effective, the first one, one of the first ones that comes to mind is The Blair Witch Project. For those of you who don't know this movie, it's a bunch of kids, they go, they're like university students, they go into the woods to try to track down the myth of the Blair Witch, and for, shortly into the movie, they you get a description of the manner in which the Blair Witch is said to have killed her victims. And then the movie ends basically with, all of a sudden, a visual of... A representation of what they have had described to them. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly how that looks or how that plays out because I don't, I don't like giving spoilers. But just like I said, they, it looks like what you think you might see if what has been described to you were really happening. However, you don't actually see a, a, anybody. You don't actually see anybody be hurt or killed you don't know exactly what's going on there's a noise there's noises that imply certain things and the, the way the camera moves it gives you an idea of what could be happening but you don't know you don't know if it's somebody who's trying to just get them off the track you don't you don't know exactly i mean there's a there's to me i i took it very much in one sense personally i thought that the the what had happened to them was what they had been looking for that entire time but it was very easy to draw any other number of other conclusions and i thought that it was very very effective and to this day is to me by far the best element of that movie so the first movie that really comes to my mind when i think about ambiguous endings other than inception and i do feel like um inception was what that rare occasion where and I, i'm just talking about it just for a second it's not really my main focus but um I think Inception was a rare occasion where an ambiguous ending was accepted by uh, moviegoers, by the wide audience, but I think the reason it was accepted is because the movie is so much about dreams that that allowed it to, um, you know, that you pretty much had a feeling it was going to end in some sort of dreamy type of way, you know, where, whether or not, and have you questioning whether or not what you were seeing was reality. So it set that up almost from the beginning, so that's how they were able to pull that off with the wide audience. In the case of the movie Boy A, which is to me a criminally underwatched movie, very underappreciated movie, um, it stars Andrew Garfield, and I think it's his best performance that I've seen. Now, to be fair, I have not seen his 
two recent movies, Hacksaw Ridge, and then the movie he did with Martin Scorsese. I put the, the title escapes my name right now, but um, yeah, you know, this is pre-social um, network. This is pre-Amazing Spider-Man. And um, Andrew Garfield just really knocked it out of the park in this movie. Absolutely amazing. And it's a very understated performance. And the gist of it is that he was involved in a crime, a pretty serious, very violent, um, you know, just tragic crime when he was younger. So um, he basically grew up, like, I mean, might as well say he kind of grew up in the uh, juvenile justice system, um, basically in prison. I mean, you know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. He grew up behind bars. And then once he um, his time is up, he kind of goes into hiding. Um, th this is, of course, through the legal system. He's basically placed in hiding because so many people are still upset about this crime that took place. And I'm not going to completely say, you know, what the crime was because this is a movie that's really worth checking out. But um, the ending, though, the way it ends off, it is a very open ending as far as to what his character's fate is. And I love it. It's, it's beautiful. And the, the final scene is just beautiful as well because um, I, I'll just say it this way without giving away too much. It's kind of like him in his own way saying goodbye to somebody in, the, in, in basically the life he had developed, you know, um, but it, it's just I, I can't say enough about it. It's done just so beautifully. And um, I really like the rest of the cast as well. Just amazing cast. The, um, the guy that kind of mentors him along, I guess his caseworker you would say is really more than a caseworker he's really like a father figure um he has a son of his own that actor did a great job as well and you really can't completely hate on his son um he, he does something in the movie that triggers uh, a lot of what happens in the third act but um I, I you know he's sympathetic at the same time and then also there's a girlfriend character i thought she did amazing as well and she's a part of the you know one of the important scenes at the end so yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Like I said, Criminally Underwatched. Please check that movie out if you get the chance. I don't know if it's on streaming, but if you can find a copy, definitely worth the time. One movie that I know has a very, very ambiguous ending. It's a movie that I like a great deal, and part of the reason why I like it is because, frankly, every time I watch it, I'm as befuddled as the time I saw it before. And I know there is extensive theories on it and explanations out there, but I, you know, the movie itself, Donnie Darko does very little, little to explain how it ends. It has all of a sudden this this series of events that happen at the, the end of the movie that imply that everything that you've seen aren't necessarily real, but you don't really know what exactly that means. You don't really know how the ending applies to all the other stuff. They really don't do an effective job in any way, shape, or form of explaining all of the more out there things you see in the movie, like where there's the things coming out of people's chest that basically show you what they're about to do that's not explained at all but at the same time you get this this, this you have this feeling where you're kind of grasping at straws and trying to put together the information that you have had have been given and you can draw conclusions but there you don't know by any stretch of the imagination that based on strictly watching the movie that you are drawing the conclusions that the filmmaker intended but I think what the filmmaker intended to a large degree was to not allow you to draw any safe conclusions. And yes, th there is definitely information out there that was given out by the filmmaker to try to explain things a little bit more, what he had in his head. And I have read and I thought that it was very effective. And if, if you've seen this movie and you don't know what to think of it, then I very much suggest that you go and check them out. But just sitting down watching the movie without any of that other information out there, it is very effective because it gives you this real feeling of mi like misgivings and, and confusion that really works because that's what everybody in the movie was going through all the time and to have this moment where you have Donnie for the first time really feel like he's at one with himself while you for the first time really don't know what's happening you're kind of switching positions with the character and I thought that, that was very effective and very cool. Now when it comes to the Affleck brothers of course there is Ben Affleck who you know we currently think of as Batman and then Casey Affleck I feel like Ben Affleck is definitely a great filmmaker as an actor, he, he's okay. I don't, I don't feel like I've been blown away by a Ben Affleck performance ever. But Casey Affleck is amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, that's just the gist of it to me. And he is one of those actors that, um, even though he hasn't done a lot of really big name movies, he absolutely can hold up a movie. And I think by far his best movie, and again, to be fair, it's not like I've seen everything he's done. 
but out of what I've seen that he's done, I think Gone Baby Gone is probably his best work, and it actually was, I believe, directed by Ben Affleck. Um, you know, somebody can check me on that, but I, I think it was directed by Ben Affleck, and it's just, wow, it's it, it's really impactful movie, and it does something that I really like. It sets up a lot of moral quandaries where there there's no clear black and white. There's no clear right and wrong. And it start it kind of sets that up early on, and it follows that all the way through in just an um, amazing way. And um, it really leaves you kind of hanging at the end, but I, I don't think it's in a bad way. But it kind of leaves you hanging in the end where you wonder, you know, did this guy make the right moves? And um, basically, he's like a private detective. And he's trying to find his um this missing girl and her mother is um her mother's a mess basically i mean um she's very loose i guess you would say she um likes to party and things like that just really not a great mother but you know it's kind of his job to try to find the child to return her to her mom so yeah it, it that that final scene it just it gives me chills really to even just envision it and to think about how you know the final shot especially which uh, again i don't want to ruin that for you because again going baby gone is it's yet another movie that to me not enough people have seen and um I, like i said then casey affleck did a great job again a, a good supporting cast and um the directing was on point as well and uh you know there's like i said th those moral quandaries that really get you thinking I, that's what i appreciate so much about movies like this the movie American Psycho is a movie that I've always greatly, greatly enjoyed. And one of the things I think that is most effective about it is the end. So for those of you who haven't seen this movie, it's about an American Psycho. Uh, a guy who goes and he's on a killing spree and he's very interesting, has very interesting motives and gives these very long speeches about his drawn out ideas on pop culture and all that kind of thing. And then at the end of the movie, it, it dawns on you because of what the information that you're given what is anything that I've just seen actually taken place? Is it all a match of the hallucination or delusion on his behalf? But on the other hand, at the end of the spectrum, you could very much easily draw the conclusion that what you saw at the end of the movie is the is the delusion and, and kind of him giving himself a get out of jail free card, emotionally speaking, and having it really play on, on both ends of the spectrum there, I think is very effective because the character throughout the movie is very vicious, but also very thought provoking and very considerate and very interesting and charismatic so throughout the movie you you kind of want to like him but at the same time you, you also hate him and but you respect his ability to be frank and, and the way he doesn't put up with people's guff and the way the way he he really just do, does whatever he wants but then at the same time in other scenes he, he, he kind of buck, buckles under with people that he feels like are above him so the character is, it has so many dichotomies and so many different moments and you can draw so many different like conclusions and you never get a feel for who he is as a person you just get this these various facades and to have the movie end with this feeling that you're not sure that anything that was just represented to you was actually real and the whole movie itself could have been one of his facades i think is just really really cool next movie um that i want to talk about there will be blood was actually you know pretty well received um I would say film lovers really received it very well. Obviously, critics um, ate it up. And uh, I think it actually did perform well box office-wise also. Um, I want to say that's the case. I have to look that up to be sure. But um, Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, is just... He, he, that man is a beast of an actor. He, he's had so many great roles. Um, I was really hoping he would actually win for Gangs of New York, but that was a pretty tough year as far as the Oscars go. And I know the Oscars are not the end all be all, but you know I grow up I grow up with the Oscars, you know, watching. So I think that's why I get stuck in my mind a lot. But you know, regardless of that, um, there will be blood. He definitely gives a great performance, and it's one of those performances where a lot of it is understated, but then. Um, very volatile at times and especially in the final scene and the way it ends i mean his his final line is just it's so simple it's just two words but it sticks with you and i think that's why people have even parodied it and like used it in other places and as a matter of fact south park even um used it in one of their episodes at the end and um i just like it because when you really think about his final words 
even though, like I said, it's only two words, and I'm not going to say them in case you haven't seen the movie, you can check it out. But, and um, that one I think actually is on Netflix, I want to say. I know it was before, maybe it still is. But um, when you really think about his final two words, I think they have a lot deeper meaning to them. And I'll, I'll say it this way, the movie basically ends with, you might as well say, a crime. And it could go one of two ways. I mean, he could um, go down for that crime, or he could actually work it out because he is like, um, he's basically, um, I don't know if baron is the right term to use, like an oil baron, but I mean, basically he's like, he's been very successful in the oil business. So maybe he actually has that amount of wealth where he could find a way to get out of what he has done. Regardless though, I think the last words that he says still hold true because um, because of the way that he is, he's just so selfish and so focused on business that he's lost what was really important to him. So regardless, the final thing that he says is true either way. Regardless, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter what happens based off of that final scene. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is for him. So I'm, I'm really fighting by myself back to not to say those final words. Just if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. The Thing is one of my all-time favorite films. I, I just absolutely love it. John Carpenter to me is one of the best filmmakers of all time and this is one of his best movies and it focuses on a bunch of guys who are up in a deserted area and they are the only people around and all of a sudden this dog comes and they discover that this dog isn't what it is what they think it is at first and essentially it's an alien being that is able to take over other life forms by killing them and then taking their place and throughout the rest of the movie once you figure that out everything is in question. You don't know if any of the characters you're watching are actually the actual people that you started the film out with or they've been replaced and it kind of plays on like a similar theme to like body snatchers and all that kind of thing but it is it, to me is much more effective because you cut off from everybody you cut off right from society and the way the movie ends is basically you have kurt russell's character he, and he, he kills a gigantic alien creature and then all of a sudden another character shows up out of the blue and it ends in a way that you don't know if that guy who just showed up is an alien or if he's a human and the movie ends basically with the two of them in, in a, sand, a standoff and you as a character as an audience member I should say have no idea if, if the, the new character that you were introduced to is legit and it's very interesting because the way the movie is set up essentially they both know that they're probably not going to make it through the night because of the cold and all that but that guy if that guy is actually an alien he could get out of there and wait to be t rescued like the aliens did in the past and do this all over again and it's just a real like gives you this real anxious and adrenaline feel that would have been absent if it had just been ended on a clear cut in a clear cut way and makes you really be like think about everything you've just seen because a lot of characters have sacrificed themselves to try to make sure that the, this, this alien is, is just obliterated so it can't take over the world which it obviously could if it gets to the regular land so it's just it's really really effective really thought-provoking really scary and just plain awesome requiem for a dream if you watch my channel you've heard me mention this movie several times before i, I really love that movie um jared leto in, um in his in it um excuse me i'm trying to think of the other actress um i want to say jennifer connelly i think is her name um Marlon Wayans and then Ellen Burstyn and those four they really make up the movie I mean there's some supporting characters but it's, it was very heavily focused on those four and I like that the, it's, it's a very balanced movie you feel like you get enough time with each of those four characters and the ending also it, it focuses again on each of those four characters and it also kind of leaves you wondering well you know what exactly will happen with them after the you know the camera stop rolling after the movie ends and um I, it, you can kind of speculate what will happen there but i like that the director didn't try to tell you and it's um directed by darren aronofsky by the way very talented director he also directed black swan but he doesn't try to tell you straight up what's going to happen with each of these characters but i think you get so, sort of some inklings of where certain characters are going like jennifer connelly's character yeah, I think you kind of get an idea of where, where she's headed. Um, Ellen Burstyn's character, I think, is very much up in the air. Um, Marlon Wayans' character probably has the best shot out of all of them for redemption, despite his circumstances at the end. Jared Leto's character, I really, I don't know, like, um, it's just very tragic. That's all I'll say. It's, it's one of those movies, it's a tough watch. 
And actually, I've, I've played it for people before and, you know, shared it with people. And they're like, God, why did you make me watch that? But I'm like, it's just because, yeah, it's a tough watch, but it's also amazing acting, including Marlon Wayans, who, you know, is surprisingly good at drama. He really is underselling his talent, you know, by not doing more drama. As a matter of fact, he has, I think, a series or a movie coming on Netflix. I saw a preview of that. Hated it. Like, it's just, it does not look promising at all. Uh, I find his comedy to be kind of grating. But um, dramatically, he is pretty on point in uh, Requiem for a Dream. So, yeah, uh, to me, it's a tough watch, but it's totally worth it, though. And uh, again, it leaves you thinking after the, you know, the movie ends. The two main actors at the heart of Doubt are Meryl Streep and Philip Seymour Hoffman. And the story of this movie is basically they're in a Catholic school and there is students that are starting to accuse Philip Seymour Hoffman's character of maybe molesting them. And Meryl Streep's character spends the rest of the movie trying to figure out if this is true and how to handle it. And she meets with some of the parents and they're, they're denying anything happened, but you get this feeling that maybe it did. And throughout the whole movie, it's this kind of back and forth of morality and this, this, char this character played by Philip Seymour Hoffman that on the surface seems like a very loving and, and caring person but you're starting to learn these things that make it may maybe that is very very questionable and then at the end of the movie nothing is made clear you do not know if the accusations are true or not you do not know what's gonna happen next and you definitely I get the feeling that everything was uh, was was probably happening but you don't know where things are going to go from there and you don't have anybody definitively saying that, you, that you, he never admits to it thing like there are people that are there's a kid who makes accus accusations well, i can speak good i swear uh the kid makes an accusation but you don't know if that kid is being honest or he's just making something up for attention it very much feels like everything is set up to make you think that it, it did take place, but you don't know for sure. And the way the movie ends gives you this real like feeling of just up. You just feel upset because you want to protect all those kids from that guy, and you know it. Obviously, it's a movie. None of this is real, but you've lived in that world for the, the previous two hours, and and to know that in that world probably nothing is going to come of it, or at least nothing is going to immediately come of it. It's just really, really heartbreaking. So Broken Flowers uh, stars Bill Murray in it's probably one of his lesser known movies. I don't think a lot of people have seen it. And I'll admit, I don't think it's for everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know it's, it is what it is. That's the way it is sometimes. Um, but I really like it. Um, also, Jeffrey Wright is in it. I think he, he's a pretty good actor too. He has a small role in this, but a kind of a pivotal one because he helps to get the, um, the ball rolling and everything. Basically, um, Bill Murray has... I don't know if it's fair to call him a womanizer necessarily, but he's definitely a sort of Don Juan type of guy that has dealt with a lot of women. And um, he basically finds out that he uh, possibly has a son. So he kind of goes on this road trip to see women from his, um, you know, women that he, his past, women that he's dealt with before, trying to basically figure out, you know, who sent this mysterious letter. You know, um, he, he's basically trying to find his son you know, and see what's going on there if he really does have a son. And um, it's pretty good supporting cast, you know, other than Jeffrey Wright. There's also, um, I think, Sharon Stone. I want to say Sharon Stone is in it as one of his exes. Also, Tilda Swinton is in it, and very different role for her. I mean, it's, it's a very small role, um, but very different for her. And I, I can't remember, um, there's at least one other actress that he visits as well. Um, I can't think of her name, but yeah, it's, the ending just, it, it's so impactful. It's such a, such a quiet kind of slow movie. That's why I say it's not for everybody, but the way it ends has such impact to me. And like the more and more I think about it, I'm like, it's just, it's so true to life. It, it makes you really think, um, you know, especially, I think it's a movie that guys should definitely watch, especially um, guys that are like late teens, early twenties, just to kind of think about what you want to do with your life and really think about your decisions that you are, you're making in terms of relationships because there are long-term effects. You got to really think about how you affect everybody, and that's what he's really seeing during that road trip. He's really seeing the effect that he had on these women, and um, you know, it's it's some sad situations, and you can see the heartbreak still there with certain characters. But um, I really like the ending because, again, there's no ribbon tied up on it. It's not like a, a perfect ending where you find out concrete for sure what is going on but I, I like that and really that's the point of that whole movie and that's why I really appreciate ambiguous endings because a lot of times that is the purpose of them 
that there aren't always answers and that's the way life is there aren't always answers but I, I you know I, like I said I appreciate filmmakers that can embrace that and and make great stories out of it you know so um like I said before I definitely want to hear from you all what are some of your favorite ambiguous endings how do you feel about them are you like me um, I know me personally if I'm watching a movie and it doesn't have a perfectly tied up ending but I still like the movie I get kind of annoyed when somebody's like well what happens next I don't get it and you know it's just I just I just want people to really challenge themselves to think on a deeper level because um, a lot of filmmakers I mean they I think they know what they're doing and they, you know there's purpose to it if you take the time to really put the thought into it not always the case you know to be fair not always the case but I think a lot of times that is the case that you know in this ambiguous for a reason and that's what you really got to think about so thank you all for taking the time to watch I know this was kind of a long video but um you know also big thank to Matt thank you to uh, Matthew movies this was a collaboration we wanted to do for a little while and then I got sick and that kind of held it up and he was very busy and that kind of held it up but I'm glad we were able to get this done you know I always like talking movies and I especially like these collaborations with Matthew movies so if you're not familiar with him make sure that you do check out his channel I will link it down in the description and um, again, thank you all for watching. You all take care. Till next time.